Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of premium quality guitar, bag, and camera straps, handmade in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Check out their website to order your own custom creation and play in style. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, what's shaking, lads and ladies? Brad the Guitologist here again. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at this solid state harmony amplifier from probably the late 60s uh, or early 1970s model H550. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. Okay, this is exactly how this thing was sent to me just as a, just as a chassis, so I don't have the rest of the amplifier. And I'm not sure when this thing was exactly made or where it was made. This says Chicago, Illinois, but of course that's where Harmony was based. Um, and I don't, they didn't make their own amps. Um, most of their amps were made by uh, Valco but this one is being a solid state this is going to be post 1968 it does have a similar look as far as the chassis goes to some of the valcos as far as the you know the layout more or less but it's not a valco for sure but you know we may do some research here to try to figure out what we have on our hands this thing, luckily it does have a schematic up here we may be able to find it online too we've got um, one capacitor that has fallen out of this thing so i'll have to figure out where that goes couple of big uh, power capacitors over here pretty big um, pretty big power transformer it's got a serial number of 22305 that I'm sure that means nothing to most anyone it claims to be 50 watts RMS output um, we have a main speaker and an extension speaker I'm not sure what this jack is it might be an auxiliary I don't know um, could could be an input I suppose as well there's a, oh, that's interesting. I guess that's the power on, on the back. Uh, I guess it must be, because I don't, yeah. No? No, there's an on-off switch here. So I don't know what that is. We'll have to look at the schematic and try to figure out um, a little bit more about this thing. Try to figure out where it's made and stuff as well. But we will, um, let's see, actually, let's take a look at the top of it. There's our... Uh, output transistors right there when we have a schematic like I said in a parts list up here and there's a schematic if you want to do like a if you want to do a control print screen somewhere along there and print that schematic you can have it uh, it's interesting though the schematic is actually pasted to the reverb tank which is a pretty good size reverb tank it looks to me like this might be an Accutronics it's hard to see but uh, yeah that could very well be an Accutronics reverb tank that's a pretty good size one so they didn't skimp on the reverb tank um, let's take a look at the power transformer code um, I don't know if you can read this or not 28012 um, I'm not sure which is which. Usually the bottom number is the is the date code. 4P21 will be the model number. Uh, I would say that that's the code right there. 28012, so it would be, what, the 12th week of 1970, probably? So, yeah, but yeah, definitely post night. Definitely post 1968. Um, let's see, we have we have one here too. 2407011. So that'll be 1970, the eleventh week, I believe. Oh, these will these will definitely tell me. 1376640. So that's 1966. So I might be wrong. I don't know. No, that's 1970. There we go. 15th week of 1970. This one just sat on the shelf for a while. Uh, yep, 1970, 15th week. 1970, 15th week. So yeah, this is a 1970 amplifier. So already we've learned something about it. So I'll tell you what we can probably do. We can probably look up 1970. I've got some catalogs. I've got Sears catalogs. And uh, I think I have a Harmony catalog possibly from that year. Uh, but we can search the net for 1970 Harmony catalogs and uh, see if we can learn any more about them. 
Yes, I was able to find some Harmony catalogs online and some more photographs as well. And I uh, was able to find out just a little more about them. It does seem like 1970 was the year that they moved to solid state after the collapse of Valco in 1968. We can also see on the rear of this example that I found on like Reverb.com or something that um, the switch that's on the back of our example and also that additional uh, output jack is not present. So those were later additions for some reason. I did figure out that that switch actually turns off the output and we'll see that shortly. Okay, we're going to cross fingers and hope and pray that we don't have to replace these big capacitors right here because if we do have to replace these large capacitors uh, this thing may become very quickly not worth the effort uh, first thing I want to do though I want to figure out uh, where this capacitor fell out from and get it replaced this is a it looks like it was a 0.47 okay yeah 0.47 microfarad well that's dead on 100 volts. All right, so first order of business, we need to find out where that was. Not really much to it. Um, these transistors look germanium to me. I'm sure they are. There's one here, a couple here, a couple of smaller ones. Uh, here's one of the, uh, here's one of the other Pastors like the one that fell out. There's one piece of wire that's kind of just dangling here. Yeah, you can see there. It should have gone from there to there, I'm sure. Okay, yeah, no big deal. We should be able to uh, tack another one on there. We may have to lift the board to do that. That'd probably be our best bet in this situation. Um... But just looking over the rest of this, we have a couple of smaller capacitors um, here. 35 volts, that's not a lot of voltage to see, really. Um, I wouldn't expect those to necessarily be bad. I would expect them to be drifted some, but not necessarily bad. We do have a pot here that's probably uh, probably has something to do with, with biasing one of these stages. We have a silicon transistor over here. Uh, we got some more germaniums down this way. There's one, two, three more further down the board. Here's another silicon one right here. Another germanium with a bigger heat, heat sink here. That looks kind of funky with that heat sink. Lots of ceramic disc capacitors in this. And then we've got some of these little kind of tropical fish ones too. And by tropical fish ones, I mean uh, those right there. There's the pot I was talking about in one of the uh, transistors. Not sure why it would be colored like that. But yeah, a lot of ceramic discs. So there's, there's another one of those little tropical fish looking ones. The ceramic discs are uh, good to see. Those things, they just hold up so well. Here's our rectifier back here. I don't see any problems with anything overheating or anything like that. We have a, that's a paper and wax capacitor. That one will probably need to go. This switch, what the hell does this switch do? It's connected to a jack. And then we've got some, it looks like it's wrapped for shielding. Coming over to here, it's really hard to say because I don't, you know, obviously I can't, I can't just look at the bottom of the board and see where, where the signal's going. Do have another capacitor here uh, that may demand our attention at some point here. I'm not just gonna recap this thing to recap it. Um, I'm gonna see if it needs it really first. These big capacitors over here, I'm, like I said, I'm crossing my fingers hoping these don't need replacing because if they do, um, just th buying those capacitors alone will probably cost more than this amp is worth in its entirety. 
that would be my guess those are not going to be cheap capacitors I'm missing a screw here where's our screw well I obviously need to replace that with something I'm not just going to leave it like that I'll tell you what let's um let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and flip this board up I think and see if we can't get a new capacitor in there okay um, I need a plan of attack for lifting this board I, th I might might be able to get it. I'm going to turn it the other way though. Here in just a second. And I also need to see if I can find a replacement screw for that center one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, shit. Oh, that. Well, that screw just broke off. That's great. Well, so much for looking for a screw. I guess I'll just move that one over to the center. Probably when you're trying to grab a piece this small, it's... Oh, it came out okay. I was going to say, the problem is sometimes it... your pliers kind of act as a heat sink and keep you from being able to uh, heat up the solder enough to get it get it out of there but that came out okay no problem okay okay um, this capacitor is really larger than what I need but I think it's all I have that's gonna work but it'll be okay we'll make it work what I usually do on situ situations like this just bend the leads inward sort of bend them again like this something like that okay I don't want to put all the screws back in it just yet I'll just put I'll put like one or two maybe I'll just put the center one in because um, I definitely want to go ahead and plug it in and fire it up on the Variac and see if it's, uh, you know, see if it's even making any noise. See what kind of symptoms it has at this point. Now that we've uh, replaced the capacitor that obviously had fallen out. All right. So let's plug this thing into the Variac. I've got it uh, hooked up to a speaker out here on the desk. I prefer doing this to to trying to whip out the oscilloscope and all that and and dummy loads and I'd rather just listen to the thing, you know. It's obvious to hear it if it's if it's working well. If it's if there's something wrong, usually you'll know it. Um, okay, we got it plugged into the very act. We're gonna dial it up slowly here. All right, so we have an on and off, uh, a ground polarity, and then we have a high gain and low gain switch. We're going into the first channel. <clears throat> it's drawing very low power. Oh, I guess that cuts the output. Interesting. channel seems fine. I'm going to go ahead and dial it up a little more here. I don't hear any strange noises or really anything so far. It's probably going to be one of those really easy ones just to capacitor replacement. Alright, 
That's up to my wall voltage right there. the other channel. I think this thing's fine. Let's, okay, this is the reverb slash tremolo channel. Let's make sure. Wow. Wow, that is a tremolo and a half. Listen to that. Lots of reverb too, man. That reverb just keeps going. Well, it's definitely punchy. Um, I still need to change the cord from a two-prong to a three-prong uh, power cord. So while I'm in there, I will track down the uh, capacitors for this tremolo and go ahead and change those. Because like I said, when you try to turn the um, speed down past a certain point, it just kind of stops oscillating. and uh, come back to this tomorrow but uh, yeah we're pretty much there I just need to figure out where those capacitors are for that tremolo section all right this might be a good time to talk a little bit about how tremolos work if we look at a typical like uh, Princeton circuit um, you will see that a tube is used with some positive feedback from the plate back into the grid uh, with a couple of capacitors there uh, and what that does is it uh, changes, it shifts the phase and it causes an oscillation with the, some positive feedback. And uh, that oscillation is then used to affect a different part of the circuit. In the case of like a Princeton, it is fed back into the uh, grid bias of the output tube. So it, it affects the bias, basically turning the amp up and down. Something similar is happening with the tremolo circuit in this particular amplifier. If we look at it, uh, we will see that there is a transistor that is doing the oscillating. And that signal is, uh, is fed over to a FET. And that FET will actually uh, turn off and on. Uh, and what that does when it turns off and on, it is actually providing a pathway to ground and... Um, so that some of the that, so that the signal is being bled off to ground. So it's uh, you're using a transistor to turn a FET on and off, so that it can uh, bleed signal off to ground. So it's kind of the same sort of um, idea, but it's executed in a slightly different way. And also um, on this particular tremolo, there is a there's an adjustment pot right here, and. Uh, we're going to adjust that and see if that helps with the problem that we're having of this thing um, just not oscillating whenever you turn the speed down to a certain point. Okay, we're back inside this amp. It is up on the bench now. We have it plugged it back into the very app. Now what I want to do is find the point at which the oscillation kind of stops and, and we're going to adjust this pot right here while we listen to the oscillation and see if it keeps going or see if we can bring it back by simply adjusting that when it goes away. So I want to try to get to the point where it stops. Yeah, you can see that's definitely increasing the intensity of the tremolo. 
for sure. Now I just kind of want to see if we can determine which of these transistors is which here. Um, let's see. Got 11.9 volts right there of non-oscillating. One volt. Let's try this one over here. Okay, this one, this oscillating at this point. Whoops. Okay, well, something just smoked. And it was this resistor right here. No, that resistor is smoking. Damn it. What I did while trying to measure, while trying to measure this leg on that transistor right there, I shorted between the that transistor leg and this resistor here, um, and then it caused it caused everything to drop out. So there was a brief there was a brief spark there. It wasn't anything big, but it was just brief. And then everything dropped out. And then this resistor, uh, that resistor right. Right there, what is what is that? A forty-seven, that yellow, purple, yellow, purple, brown. So what is that? Is that forty-seven ohm resistor. It's probably something in the. I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing that is some kind of. I'm guess, guessing that's some kind of um, voltage supply. Maybe it's the. I don't know. Really don't know. We'll have to investigate further and see if we can come up with an answer to that. So we'll figure out why that's why that's burning. Okay, so something kind of interesting just happened. I was using my probe, uh, trying to find out which of you know which of these um, transistors over here was the fit and which one was the oscillator uh, NPN transistor, and I was measuring. I was measuring uh, the leg of this one that's closest to me here and uh, measuring the voltage to ground and notice that there was oscillating voltage right there well I accidentally I thought I did I thought I must have because it did pop I thought I must have bridged between here and and here on this resistor but the thing is uh, those those two points are actually are actually already bridged underneath those are those are together in the circuit regardless so it whatever it was it wasn't something I did I didn't probe it and short it um, it was just a total coincidence what I looked back at the video that I was making when uh, when the little pop happened and everything stopped and there was a spark coming from over here in this area and what I noticed was this uh, this heat sink on this transistor was all the way over here shorted out against uh, this resistor right here I mean it was leaning right on top of it so so I've moved that away from it and also when I got up under here before I before I realized that that was that way I was getting under here and I also realized that I also realized that uh, that transistor is just barely hanging on right there. You can see the, you see that trace right there, how it's torn away. And I mean, it is, it's still connected, but it's just kind of barely hanging on. But I'm thinking what may have happened is I may have, um, I may have shorted out this transistor, but the thing that's doing now is this resistor right here is trying to smoke. So there is a lot of current being drawn through this resistor. That is a 470 ohm resistor, and it's in parallel with this capacitor right beside it, this 0 0.02. So I was kind of measuring around, trying to figure out where it was going, and realized that these two components are in parallel. Well, if we flip this thing back over, and we look at where that is on the schematic. This is the actually the only schematic that I have, the one that's on the other side of this amp. So I keep having to flip this stupid thing back and forth. I think I'm going to take a photograph of it here in a second. But, um, it's been just as easy so far to kind of flip it. But 
still a pain in the ass. But, um, okay. Uh, right there, C10 and R8. Uh, C10 calls for a .02 capacitor. And this R8 right here is a 470 ohm resistor. And there's only a couple different places where it looks like there's R8s in this circuit. Uh, but this is the one place where I can see where they're, these two are in parallel. And it looks like um, we're attached to the collector of Q3 right here directly. So if, there's a sh if this is shorted, if Q3 is shorted to ground, Um, I was gonna say I suppose it's possible that that um, you would have a lot of current flowing through this we could check C3 as well Q, Q3 C3 D2 D1 Q4 any of these really could be at fault okay so I guess the first thing I should probably do um, is check Q3. I'm not sure which one is which here because none of these are labeled unfortunately on the board so you just it's a game of guesswork as to which one is which. Uh, I'm guessing the ones with the uh, heat sinks are probably Q4 and Q1 up there. I guess there's a Q3 up there. Uh, the two Q5s, those will be your output transistors. Q5 is a 2N3055. That will be the output transistors, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to write down um, the numbers for Q3 and Q4 on those transistors. And we'll, uh, we'll read what's actually on the transistor and see which one is which. Okay, so here's the transistor I'm looking at, and the, the numbers that are on there don't correspond at all to anything that I'm seeing on the schematic. So, uh, this is a, this is an, e, you can't read the whole thing, but it's an ECG129. Sylvania 501, ECG129. So it doesn't really correspond to anything on the schematic. Um, and that's the one that, uh, that's the one that shorted, shorted out. Probably the thing to do now would be to test it and make sure that it's still a working transistor. And then, uh, these diodes that are close by, like this one, this blue one right behind it, and this one that's over here, uh, we should check those to make sure that those are good. Um, because again, it's really complete guesswork. Uh, which one is which here without without firing the thing up and when I fire it up once again this thing this uh, resistor right here starts to smoke so I know the problem is over here in this area this is where the spark happened as well so something over here is fried and shorted to ground we'll have to just figure out slowly go through here and figure out what components bad alright looking up the specs on the ECG 129 that is a PNP uh, transistor collector to base voltage of 90 volts collector to emitter voltage maximum of uh, 80 volts and if we look over here it's a it's a TO39 package yeah that does seem to line up it's a metal can lead 1 is the emitter lead 2 is the base and lead 3 is the collector gives us a diagram here you see this little tab over here so the leg that's closest to the tab is number one and then it goes around two and three so that's gonna help us identify what's what alright the one that's coming off right there is the emitter um, those two that are together right there will be the base and then that one up top there will be the collector so we need to do some measurements Tell you what I want to do. I think I just want to. I think I just want to desolder this thing, get it out of there, and uh, test it out of circuit just to be sure. 
Okay, so I have this transistor out of the amp, and we'll see what how it tests. That came up right away. Yeah, that's a PMP, and it's good. So tran that transistor is not the problem. Uh, I'm suspecting more and more that it probably has something to do with one of these diodes over here, and it's probably that one right there would be my guess. That blue one. It just kind of sucks because I was so close to uh, this being ready to go, and I don't know. It was. I guess it was just a matter of time, probably, before that would have shorted anyway. All right, so that's testing okay. Half a volt is about what you want to see on a on a diode like that. Let's go ahead and test um, test a couple more of these. Uh, yeah, that one's that one's good. That one's good. Mm. That one's good. I seriously doubt it'll be this one, but I'll try it. That one's good. That one actually measures good. It's measuring the 470 like it's supposed to. I need to get some pictures of the schematic so I can stop flipping this thing back and forth. Okay, uh, I've decided to plug this thing back into the Variac um, and we're going to dial it up slowly and I've got my lead coming off of the resistor that was burning before. Uh, I'm just kind of curious to see what sort of voltage is present at that point. Um, so according to this, there is no connection from that side to ground. I wonder, no, let's try the other side first. Uh, same with the other side. So I want to check the voltage on this one side of the resistor. Actually, you know what I'll do? I want to check the voltage drop through this resistor. Okay, so it's 400, 468 ohms. Now let's go to volts. Make sure it's on. 40, 48 volts drop. 49, 50 volts. 51, 52 volts drop across that resistor, and it's already smoking. So, hmm, why would that resistor? be drawing so much current. Why? We had the collector of Q4. This one, this leg. So that should have been 30, 37 and a half volts. I think that's what that says. So this 37 and a half volts shorted to either, it's either an R15 or an R7. Both of those say 18K and those are the closest ones that appeared that were within the ballpark on the parts list. There was no 19K on the parts list so there's an R15 or an R7. And I see a couple of R15s so it could be could have been this one, could be this one, could be this one over here, could have been any of those that it shorted to. Um, but it looks to me like it can't be this one because there's a C7 uh, in parallel with it, and there's no, there's no, uh, nothing in parallel with with this one on the board. So it might be this one. And there's a there's a big capacitor right here on it. There's two of them, in fact. Um, and this is a zero volt potential right here at this point. I want to check one side and then I'll check the other side and see where the voltage, which side the voltage is on. I think that's what I want to do first. So let's um, let's do that. Let's determine which side that voltage is on 
and it should be it should be on this side but it jumps to 37 so I have 37 volts on one side and tw 23 or negative 23 on the other side kind of wonder now whether it could be a case of this uh, C3 right here being shorted because if this was shorted it would put instead of 3.3 volts being right here negative 3.3 volts which I, I've got ne I don't have negative 3.3 on either side I'm supposed to have negative 1 volt right here but I've got like 20 negative 20 something and then on this side I've got like 30 something or whatever so my guess is if this C if this Q3 was shorted you would get voltage here because there's 36 36 and a half volts negative right here on this spot so if this was shorted C3 or if uh, somehow Q3 was shorted but I've tested Q3 I think it's okay at least it tests okay in circuit I haven't pulled it but I might pull it next but let's try C3 first because if that was shorted then we would definitely get voltage right there so let's look at C3 okay C3 is a 39 microfarad Oh, that would be a disc cap. Is that a disc cap? Oh, no, that's micro microfarads. So 39 micro microfarads. I think the only, the only ones it really could be is are those two right there that are in parallel. There's a there's a couple. Well, there's a 30. Yeah, there's a 39 nano. Right there. And there's another one here in parallel with it. I think I'll pull the transistor and test it. And while it's out, I'll also test these capacitors right here. Okay, I don't know how well we're going to be able to see this. Um, but right here are those two capacitors. And across these leads is where I was afraid it was getting shorter. But you see those two? You see these two pads right... Let's get a pointer. See these two pads right here, how close they are? These are these are two these are two different connections. Traces. The trace starts here and comes down and curves around this way for this one trace. And then this other trace goes over here. These two are not supposed to be connected, but it looks like there might be some black or something jumping across there. I wonder, could it be that simple? I wonder if there's definitely a little bit of yeah, there was a little bit of gunk there. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's probably not that. I'm sure it's something else, but, you know, that'll eliminate one possibility. I'm going to go ahead and pull that uh, transistor right back there. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. <clears throat> okay, instead of pulling that transistor entirely, I've actually just lifted the one leg. This leg right here. So C3 is still connected, uh, but this leg of Q3 is not connected. I want to see if there's still voltage right here. Yeah, there's 27 volts right there still. Oh wait, smoke seems to be coming from somewhere else. Okay, so a different resistor is smoking now. That one over on this side, right there. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this um, transistor Q3, that Q3 right there transistor, the rest of the way out. Okay, this transistor tests good. 
Uh, that's what we should see, so it's not the transistor. But here's what I did figure out. The source of our positive voltage is up there. You can't see it. It's behind that 3-2. Sorry about the bad schematic work here on this one. But um, by disconnecting this positive voltage coming in, um, I have successfully stopped the smoking of this resistor. So right here, all along this rail, we had like almost 20 volts, basically. All on this rail. It's supposed to have zero volts right here. We had like 20. But by disconnecting that positive voltage coming in, I've eliminated this voltage. It's it's now zero. Um, well, pretty much zero. Yeah, pretty close. Close to zero volts. And that is with our positive voltage uh, disconnected. We should have, and I can measure it, we're supposed to have the positive positive 39 volts at that point that's about what we should have or 38 volts rather and that's exactly what we have positive 38 volts so um, the our power sections fine uh, power supply is good the, the rectifier is good um, I'm getting positive and negative voltage like I should. Something on this board is definitely the problem and I just cannot find it. I have tested all of the um, resistors. I've actually changed a couple of these caps because I was thinking I was thinking I've got I've got another place where tw about 20 volts comes in and it's right up there. You see that 20 volts right there? So that's coming in off the positive rail to, to this point, and then it comes through this capacitor. And I was thinking maybe that capacitor was shorted, and that's putting 20 volts on here. Well, that was a good thought, but it wasn't the case. I went ahead and replaced both of these capacitors just for the hell of it. And um, that's, that's these two here, this one and this one. So they are not the source of the issue. Yeah, man, I don't know. And I've also... Over here on this, over here at this point, okay, you see the diode right there, um, and then you see 37 volts here. Well, I've tested that, and there is 37 volts. I've tested across this resistor to this point, and there is 0.8 volts here. So the voltage is, the positive voltage is not coming through here, this way. So it's not coming through this way. It's not coming through this way. Um, this Q3 I didn't really test, but um, this 0.5 volts was present here. I pulled this transistor right here out because once again, we're getting positive 15 volts right here. We're getting uh, negative 27 volts right here on this side. And we're getting uh, our negative 37 volts right here like we're supposed to get. Uh, over on this side right here, we're getting only one volt like you know it was pretty close to what we should see so something is going on right in here somewhere with one of these components something's coming in off of it and q4 is right in the center of of all this but the thing is this it's testing good so um i'm gonna leave it out of the circuit for just a minute the thing is too um when i turn it on and it's getting hot along with uh, this this resistor here was smoking at one point and this resistor here is smoking every time I turn the thing on so these two resistors have a large drop across them they're drawing a lot of current through them and Q4 is the only th the only common thread between those two so it's got to be this transistor even though it tests good it's got to be bad Okay, Q4 is still out of the circuit. Uh, again, I had no positive 15 volts here anymore, um, but I do, did still have the negative 27 or so volts here. Um, let's see, a lot of current being drawn through R8 right here. Um, so Q3 will be is our next suspect, but I've already tested Q3 also, and that, that came up empty. Um, so I'm pulling... I'm uh, pulling this capacitor right here, uh, this C3, and we're just going to pull, 
well it's actually two capacitors in parallel making up one value but uh, I've got those pulled out and we'll see what that does to our voltages nope it's still getting there that voltage just keeps creeping up or creeping down I guess however you want to look at it so that did not solve it either and once again this transistor is hot and that's uh, that's that Q that's this one right here but again I've already pulled that transistor and I've already tested it so so what I'm thinking about doing now is putting uh, Q4 back in the amp and pulling Q3 and testing again to see if our negative 27 volts uh, pops up and we'll just We'll just keep following it. We'll work our way back. Uh, I think we should probably start by testing that rail right there where it says one volt. Um, yeah, we'll start with that because if there's voltage getting in uh, to here, maybe through Q3, per this one perhaps, then you know it could it could make its way down. But let's see. <clears throat> so we're testing this point right on the other side of R18 to see what. Uh, voltage exists right there and we shouldn't have any more than maybe a half a volt or one volt 29 volts right there at that point <laughs> okay but the thing is I've already I've already pulled this one as well I've already pulled this transistor too and it doesn't appear to be a problem I just don't know I wonder if I, I can pull it now and uh, yeah, I might do that. I might pull it now and check the voltage. We'll see if we still have anything like that 20 volts at, or that 27 volts or whatever back over here. And I should only have to lift one leg. All right. Okay, so there's that leg lifted. So it won't, it shouldn't conduct. And if there, if there was any kind of short or anything like that, then that should take care of it. All right. Well, the hum is louder. And I had, uh, let's see, I had 8.5 volts right there at that position, whereas before, what I have, 20, did I have 20, 20 something? Okay, so here's the crux of the issue with this thing. I need to somehow figure out why I'm getting 37 volts right here at this point. Uh, I should be getting just one volt, and I'm getting 37 volts. Q3 is my main suspect, but I've all already pulled this out of circuit and tested it, and it's fine. I've tested this diode. I've tested, uh, I've tested this resistor, these three diodes, everything going into this. I've tested R11s. Uh, these two are um, a little bit lower than they should be, They're, but that shouldn't account for why we get so high of a voltage right there at that point. So I really need to figure out why that this voltage is so high, and until I do, um, I'm not going to be able to fix this thing. Q3, like I said, tests fine, uh, so I need to probably find a substitute and just pop in just to see, um, see if that helps. I did lift one of the legs, and the voltage did decline. It, it went down to like... 8.7 volts, but that still didn't take care of all of it. So I'm, you know, still trying to kind of figure out what's going on with this. I've gotten uh, some new transistors in. I've gotten, a, I went ahead and ordered a couple of them, of each of the 128s and the 129s. These are NTE 128 and 29s, and they are direct replacements for the, what did I say? Those were ECGs or whatever. Um, so we're going to replace the. Let's see which ones. Uh, it'll be this one and this one, I believe, are the two I want to go for first. And I think one of these is uh, bad, and I'm leaning toward it being this one that's up on the positive side of the circuit. This is the one that uh, that actually caused the spark. Um, 
so it could be this one as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and shotgun both of those um, and see see if that solves the issue. Okay, I actually uh, replaced those two uh, driver transistors. Uh, this one on the positive side and th that one there on the negative side. And I seem to have some life now, so uh, I think we've got it. I, I just, I don't know what happened. I, you know, I know obviously what happened. It was a short, but um, this has just been a weird one because the thing is, both of those old transistors tested fine. I pulled them and I went back and forth and I looked at all every com component surrounding it. And this is just a hair puller, man. You know, I can see why people don't take in very many solid state amplifiers because these things are so finicky. And the components can test good and not be good, you know. Um, that, that's, that makes it pretty hard to diagnose a fucking problem if you test components again and again and you trace things out to the point where you're, you, you know, you realize voltage should not be right there at that point and you trace you trace every single route that the voltage could be coming from and you narrow it down to one thing and then you test the component and the component's good it just really throws you for a loop and frankly kind of pisses you off makes you not want to screw with anything solid state but uh but we are good to go, uh, it sounds like. Let me, let's see if that tremolo is working okay. Let's put it in the other channel and see if that uh, works now. I will adjust this pot, that uh, purple one right there, as best I can. Okay, I think that's going to be better. Um, I left, you know, more lead on these transistors than was there originally, so they're standing up taller off of the board. So they've kind of, they've kind of got clearance up and over everything this time. So um, we're not going to have that problem again where the heat sink shorts against a neighboring component. I anyway, <laughs> this turned out to be a really, really huge pain in the ass, and uh, not not something I really want to repeat. Uh, I guess I did learn something though. Uh, you know, you always try to take the best from a bad situation and I definitely learned that uh, you can't always trust um, the readings for these uh, tra for stuff like transistors, man. These, these things are very sensitive and though they might test good in your tester, that's not always uh, that's not always 100% accurate. Uh, so it did turn out that the one that was bad was the uh, ECG 128 which was the one on the positive voltage side which I suspected was the case because we had to have been getting positive voltage uh, down into those areas of the amp where positive voltage didn't need to be so so yeah okay success <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>